gross. There's like thousands of ants in this one little spot. Gross. Hey, David, I heard that you were freaking out. What's wrong? Oh, Adam, I'm so glad you came. <laughs> There's this little pile of dirt here, like thousands of ants. I'm disgusted by it. Like, I'm afraid someone's gonna get bit, get mm -hmm. really hurt. Can we just kill it? Well, David, ants actually play a very important role in our ecosystem. Really? Like, what do they do? So, ants are insects, and insects made up, make up 80% of the species on our planet. They play an important role as pollinators, decomposers, and a valuable food source for so many animals. Oh, wow. Yeah, so let's go find out a little bit more about them. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Adam Rouse. I'm the EE Program Coordinator for Wasiga 4-H Center. Today, we're going to be learning what's the buzz about our insects. Insects are in the animal kingdom just like humans, but as they go down the line of classification, they are in the phylum Arthropoda, which means jointed appendage, and the subphylum Hexapoda, which means six feet. They also are invertebrates, so unlike us, they don't have a backbone. So, a lot of times, we don't like insects buzzing around us because they get in our face, they get in our eyes, we just find them annoying. But they serve so many important roles in our ecosystem. Just yesterday, this plant next to me was covered in our honeybees, carpenter bees, and butterflies pollinating the plant. Now, insects save our farmers billions of dollars each year by helping pollinate the crops. Now, let's head on inside and see an insect up close and learn about their body parts. We talked about how insects make up 80% of all species on the planet Earth, but they have a lot of characteristics that they share in common. They all have three body segments, the head, thorax, and abdomen. On their head, they have compound eyes, antennae, and a mouth appendage. And by looking at that mouth appendage, you can tell what that insect specializes in eating. On their thorax, they have those six jointed appendages, and a lot of times they're going to have wings, but not all the times. Another cool thing about insects, they are the only invertebrate that are able to fly. On their abdomen, they sometimes have a stinger, which I know is not fun for humans, but it is something they use to help gather their food and for defense. And surrounding their entire body, they have hair and a hard exoskeleton, because they don't have bones like you or I, but that exoskeleton helps keep them all together and make sure they're protected. Now, we talked about how they are important pollinators for all of our plants, but they are also fantastic at decomposing. So we're gonna go outside and look at decomposition in process in insects. Let's go. We talked about how our insects are important decomposers, kind of like this fungi right behind me. Decomposers help break down dead organic plants and animals, returning nutrients back to the environment. And as they're breaking down this tree, they're actually serving as an important food source for other insects and animals. So right behind me, you can actually see that there are spiders hunting them and insects that are running all about this tree. And along with being an important food source for other animals and even humans, we get valuable products from them. We get honey from our honeybees and silk from our silkworms. Cool, Adam. I love insects. <laughs> Let's go take them back to the entomology lab at Wasiga and teach them about metamorphosis with some of our creepy crawlers that we have. Yeah, let's go! Okay. Insects, just like amphibians, go through metamorphosis. However, insects can go through different types of metamorphosis. One very common type is called complete metamorphosis. This is what butterflies do. Butterflies start out as a caterpillar, go into chrysalis, become a butterfly. Uh, another example of complete metamorphosis is right here. These are live animals that we have here at Wasiga. Okay, so let me show you these. This is called a mealworm. Okay, and this, I can show you the four stages of complete metamorphosis. First stage, egg, too small to see. Second stage, mealworm. Right here kind of looks like a worm. Worms are not an insect. So this is a mealworm, it is an insect. Um, the third stage is the pupa. That's this thing right here. The mealworm becomes this. It's alive. It's in there. 
It doesn't move when it's in this stage, doesn't eat, but it's going through massive changes inside there. And when it's ready, out pops the adult, which is this beetle. That's what a mealworm turns into, a beetle. And that is complete metamorphosis. Now, another type of metamorphosis is called no metamorphosis. You can probably guess what that is. It doesn't, doesn't go through any kind of massive change. Um, you'll have the young, looks like the adult, and gradually grows bigger and bigger. Examples of these are lice, ow, ah, uh, silverfish, or springtails. Two other types of metamorphosis our insects are going to go through are gradual and incomplete. With these metamorphosis, there's three stages to development. There's the egg, there's the nymph, and then there's the adult. With our incomplete metamorphosis, the nymph isn't associated with looking like their adult counterpart, such as our dragonfly or mayfly nymphs. Whereas with gradual metamorphosis, the nymph looks very similar to their adult counterpart, but it's missing their wings, just like our grasshoppers or our cockroaches. And speaking of cockroaches, we actually have giant cave cockroaches here at Osiga 4 8 Center, or they're also known as Brazilian cockroaches, and we're going to get some of them out so you can get a close and personal look at them. Hang on one second. Here we have the Brazilian cockroach. They can be found in Central America and Northern South America. They like cool, dark places, and they like to eat fruit, seeds, decaying plants, and dead insects. Adam, like I'm nervous that this guy's gonna jump off and fall to the ground and get hurt. That's, that, don't worry about that. Insects have a nice hard exoskeleton on them, which will protect them. It's flexible, and they found that the American cockroach can stand being squished to 900 pounds its own weight. <laughs> Whoa, 900 pounds? That would be like two fire trucks running over the top of me, squishing me. Why aren't insects amazing animals and important for our ecosystems? They are. Thank you everyone for joining the Wasiga 4-H Center and learning a little bit about insects. See you next time.